Basic Rigging Safety Lecture, Milton J. Shupai, Mechanical Safety Officer, University of Rochester, Laboratory for Laser Energetics. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Rigging Safety Lecture 1, Summary, Safety is everyone has business and compliance with. Safety procedures is mandatory. If an activity or practice seems unsafe, stop work and take the time to address concerns. Only designated or qualified personnel may attach loads to an overhead hoist. No personnel are qualified or permitted to repair rigging equipment. Only approved slash rated rigging gear shall be attached to a load hook. Load ratings shall never be exceeded. It is the rigger's responsibility to ensure all components used in a rigging operation meet the required load ratings. If a rigger is unable to determine a proper rigging configuration, contact me or an advanced rigger for support. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 2. There are two specific roles in moving material, overhead, hoist operators and riggers. There are two classes of training for hoist operators. Hoist operator for overhead vertical lifting with unpowered, horizontal motion. Overhead crane operator for overhead vertical lifting with powered horizontal motion. There are three classes of training for riggers. No training is required for rigging payloads 120 LBS. Basic rigger for personnel attaching any load from 120 to 500 LBS to any hoist for a pure vertical lift. Advanced rigger for personnel attaching any load 500 LBS to any hoist or any load using multiple load hooks. Overhead rigging of material or equipment is to be performed only by Qualified Personnel, Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Barging Safety Lecture 3, Basic Rigging Scope of Qualification. Basic Rigging Training qualifies the individuals to use the following, equipment, slings, synthetic web slings, round and flat, hardware, hoist rings, eye bolts, shackles, hooks. Basic Rigging Training qualifies the individuals to perform the following, activities, conduct rigging operations, rig payloads for overhead lifts using the equipment listed above. Attach payloads to any load hook. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 4. OSHA Department of Labor Doll establishes the rules for overhead hoists. The rules for rigging equipment are established in 29 CFR 1910.1A4. Slings and 29 CFR 1926.251 Rigging Equipment for Material Handling. The doll incorporates additional rules by reference by citing additional standards within the regulations. As B30 pertains to lifting and material handling related equipment, there are 28 subparts to As B30. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Barging Safety Lecture 5. Purpose of the As B30 Standard. The B30 Standard is intended to prevent or minimize injury to workers and otherwise provide for the protection of life, limb, and property by prescribing safety requirements provide direction to manufacturers, owners, employers, users, and others concerned with or responsible for its application. See guide governments and other regulatory bodies in the development, promulgation, and enforcement of appropriate safety directives. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 6. Numerous portions of the ASM B30 standard apply to rigging equipment. Each of the B30 sections listed below contain requirements on the selection, use, maintenance, and inspection. B30.1 jacks. B30.9 slings. B30.10 hooks. B30.20 below their hook lifting devices. B30.26 rigging hardware. This lecture distills the ASM requirements into the policies and practices used at Rev May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 7. The basic steps for moving a payload. 1. Prep work. 1. Understand the payload. 2. Select the rigging gear. 3. Inspect all rigging gear. 4. Assign responsibilities. 2. Attach the rigging gear to the payload. 3. Attach payload to a load hook. 4. Move the payload. 5. Secure the payload. 6. Detach the payload from a hook. 7. Remove the rigging gear. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 8. A vital part of your prep work is knowing the payload and path of travel, weight, can often be found in notes section of a part drawing, calculations, volume, max density, talk to mechanical engineering, center of gravity, drawings will sometimes denote CG, test lift to determine CG, path of travel, know that destination is clear and ready to accept the payload, ensure the path is clear of any obstructions and personnel that will hinder movement. 
Rev May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 9. Select rated rigging equipment based upon the payload and how it is used. Know the load capacity of the overhead hoists and support structures. This includes hoists, bridges, jibs, or gantries. Know the load capacity of rigging hardware used in the rigging operation. This includes the shackles, hoist rings, straps, etc. Know how use of the equipment affects the load rating. Use only load rated products. Never exceed the rated load capacity of any piece of rigging equipment. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 10. Rigging equipment must be inspected prior to each use to ensure that it is safe. Hardware. Visually inspect all hardware for damage including, but not limited, to screws, lifting shackles, hoist rings slash lifting eyes, etc. Look for thread damage, bent or fractured pieces, intentional or unintentional modifications, slings. Visually inspect for damage or fraying. Ensure load rating tag is on the sling and legible. Inspect sewn threads. Any rigging equipment that is found to be unsafe must remove from service immediately. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 11. During prep activities, personnel, assignments and responsibilities are reviewed. Hard hat and safety glasses must be worn during all rigging operations. Make sure all personnel involved understand the purpose and the nature of the operation. Designate specific tasks to individuals as needed. Use a ground spotter when lifting loads to upper level areas. Post a sentry or barricade to prevent personnel from walking under the payload. Ensure communication between all parties involved is clear and concise. Example, rigger number one moving the load north. Rigger number two moving the load north by. Never leave a suspended load unattended. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 12. Rated versus non-rated rigging hardware. The terms rated and non-rated have specific meaning in the rigging field. Load rated products are engineered with special considerations important to lifting loads with cranes and hoists. Non-rated products often look the same, but their engineering does not provide the same design factors and safety features as the load rated versions. Never use non-rated products for rigging. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 13. Synthetic Slings. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic Re Jing Safety Lecture 14. Synthetic slings are used with three basic hitch styles. Sling ratings are specified for each of three basic styles, vertical, choker, and basket. For the basket style hitch, the load rating is specified for a 90 degrees sling, angle, load. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 15. Synthetic slings, two basic styles, endless loop and I and I. Type 3 flat I is the most popular for all three hitch styles. Type 4 twisted I is more commonly used for choker hitch. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 16. Only synthetic slings are to be used at made of either polyester or nylon. Various widths available most common at are from 1 to 3 wide. Information sewn into the sling label, manufacturer's name, serial number, load ratings per hitch style, material, length, sling type, material. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 17. Synthetic web slings shall be immediately removed from service if any of the following conditions exist. Burn damage from either heat or chemical sources. Heat damage may not be obvious. Any synthetic sling exposed to temperatures above 150 degrees Fahrenheit must be removed from service. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 18. Synthetic web slings shall be immediately removed from service if any of the following conditions exist. Snags, punctures, tears or cuts, broken or worn stitches. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 19. Synthetic web slings shall be immediately removed from service if any of the following conditions exist. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 20. In a bridle hitch, two, three or four single hitches are Used together to hoist objects that have lifting lugs or other attachments. Bridle hitches can be assembled from individual components slings, shackles, hooks, etc. Bridle synthetic slings are permanently assembled units consisting of a number of web slings grouped together on a master link. Bridle slings typically have one to four legs. Sling ends can be either eyes or various types of hooks. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 21. Sling rigging practices using a choker hitch. Set the sling angle to 120 degrees for a full load rating. Improperly setting the choke can 
reduce the load rating by as much as 50%. Angle of choke, dag rated capacity, percent, over 120, 100, 90 to 120, 87, 60 to 89, 74, 30 to 59, 62, 0 to 29, 49, Rev May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 22 Sling Rigging Practices Using a Basket Hitch Remember that basket hitch ratings for slings are at 90 degrees. The legs of a basket hitch are typically collected on a single hook. A sling angle less than 90 degrees increases the tension load in the sling. 1000 LBS 1000 LBS 1000 LBS 1000 LBS 1000 LBS Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 23 Synthetic Sling Do S and Don TS Do S Don TS Visually inspect sling for any do not use if any part of sling is damaged and removed from service damaged If necessary do not use if safety information if Ensure safety tag is attached, missing or not legible Legible and has all pertinent do not tie slings together Information Verify load ratings per hitch style do not use a sling shock loaded remove from that has been. Use softeners on sharp corners service. As necessary never exceed the load rating. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 24. Is this sling safe to use? Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 25. Three primary pieces of hardware used at swivel hoist rings, eye bolts, shackles. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 26 Hoist Rings Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 27 Swivel Hoist Rings are able to accommodate various use angles Load ratings based on Size Ring size and thread size Material Commonly alloy steel or stainless steel Thread length Longer length Usually designed for soft metals aluminum Shorter lengths can be used in ferrous metals steel each hoist ring is load tested and comes with a factory certificate. Many different types and sizes are available. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 28. The longer effective thread projection that is. Approximately twice the thread diameter must be used. With a hoist ring threaded into aluminum. Dimensions. Effective. Working torque thread. Frame or 125 load in projection weight. Size stock no. Limit FT LBS bolt size length radius diameter each. No. LBS. A BCDE FGH LBS 21,016,909,528 a half minus 13x 2 1,016,912,2,528 a half minus 13x 2.50, 1.24.85, 1 1.96, 0.870.69.35.292.36 2 1,016,924,065 x 2 minus 1x 2 minus 10x 2 
Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Rejig Safety Lecture 29. Hoist rings have free movement about two axes. This motion allows the hoist ring to always be aligned with the sling, bail, swivel. Never use a hoist ring if the swivel or bail bind. This is an indication of damage. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arching Safety Lecture 30. Hoist ring load rating and torque values are stamped or etched on the ring located on top of the hoist ring. Torque wrench must always be used for installation. Never exceed the load rating. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arching Safety Lecture 31. Hoist ring do s. Visually inspect hoist ring for any damage or corrosion on threads and body. Ensure placard information is attached, if not removed from service. Must use a torque wrench for installation. Make sure the thread engagement is appropriate for the base metal being threaded into. Approximately one times the diameter when threading into steel. Approximately two times the diameter when threading into aluminum. Verify swivel function after installation. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 32. Hoist ring on TS. Do not use if any part of hoist ring is damaged. Do not use if placard information if missing or not legible. Do not use a hoist ring if it is not tightened to recommended torque. Do not use if hoist ring does not swivel. Do not use washers in between hoist ring and mounting surface. Do not repair, replace, or modify any piece of a hoist ring. Do not use if gap exists between part and hoist ring. Do not use a hook larger than the diameter of the hoist ring opening. Never exceed the load rating. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 33. What is the SWL of this hoist ring? Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Rejing Safety Lecture 34. I bolts. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Rejing Safety Lecture 35. Machinery I bolts are not as versatile as hoist rings fixed position based upon thread engagement makes them alignment sensitive when pulling at an angle can accommodate through hole applications load ratings are based upon our number of factors size ring size and thread size material commonly forged from carbon steel or stainless steel carbon steel and stainless steel have different load ratings for the same size use angle can only be used up to 45 degrees two different styles and numerous sizes available Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 36. There are two styles of eye bolts. Plain pattern shoulder pattern. Straight vertical lifts only angular lifts up to 45 degrees from vertical. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 37. Machinery eye bolts must be used with great care. Working load limits for eye bolts WR King load limit are based on a straight vertical lift diameter and straight pull 45 degrees pull eye. In a gradually increasing manner threads shoulder only. Angular lifts will significantly 1 fourth minus 2500 125. Lower working load limits C5 16 minus 18 900 225. Shoulder pattern and should be 3 8 minus 16 1400 350. Avoided whenever possible 7 16 minus 14 2500. If an angular lift is required, a half minus 13 2600 650 properly seated shoulder pattern 9 16 minus 12 3200 750. Eye bolt must be used 5 8 minus 11 4000 1000. Loads should always be applied 3 4 minus 10 6000 1500. Two eye bolts in the plane of the 7 8 minus 9 7000 1750. I, not at an angle to this plane 1 minus 8 9000 2250. Angular lifts must never be more 1 to 1 slash 8 minus 7 12000 2500 than a 45 degrees. Pull 1 to 1 slash 4 minus 7 15000 3750. 1 to 1 slash 2 minus 6 20 1000 4900. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 38. Loads should always be applied to eye bolts in the plane of the eye. Side pull in the plane of the eye. Side pull out of the plane of the eye. Rev. May 18, 2012 Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 39. Do not reef slings between attachment points. Reaving introduces side pull for 1 LBF at 60 degrees. There is also a 1 LBF. Although the upper sling angle is lateral load. The resultant load on 60 degrees, the resultant sling angle is the eye bolt is 1.73 lbf, 30 degrees. 
1.73 LBF, 1 LBF, 1 LBF, Rev May 18, 2012, Basic Arjing Safety Lecture 40. Eye bolt identification markings, manufacturer and size. Eye bolts are not required to be marked with the W or required installation torque. The user must look up this information prior to use. Do not use any eye bolt for rigging unless there are clearly legible identification marks. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 41. Shoulder nut eye bolt installation for inline and angular loading. Inline. A. The threaded shank must protrude through the load sufficiently to allow full engagement of the nut. 45 degrees. B. If the eye bolt protrudes so far through the load that the nut cannot be tightened securely against the load, use properly sized washers to take up the excess space between the nut and the 90 degrees load. C. Place washers or spacers between nut and load so that when the nut is tightened securely, the shoulder is secured flush against the load surface. D. E. Thickness of spacers must exceed this distance between the bottom of the load. C. D. B. And the last thread of the eye bolt. A. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic Reaching Safety Lecture 42. All machinery eye bolts are not created equal. A comparison of the same size WR King load limit shoulder eye bolts from two diameter and Chicago Crosby. Manufacturers shows different thread straight pole straight pole W. 1 fourth minus 2500 650. 5 sixteenths minus 18 900 1200. 3 eighths minus 16 1400 1550. Chicago will rate the shoulder. I bolt for a side pull up to 45 degrees, 7 sixteenths minus 14 2000 minus a half minus 13 2600 2600, 9 sixteenths minus 12 3200 minus, Crosby will rate the shoulder, 5 eighths minus 11 4000 5200, I bolt for a side pull up to 90 degrees, 3 fourths minus 10 6000 7200, 25% of inline W. 7 eighths minus 9 7 thousand 10 thousand 600. 1 minus 8 9 thousand 13 thousand 300. 1 to 1 slash 8 minus 7 12 thousand 15 thousand. 1 to 1 slash 4 minus 7 15 thousand 21 thousand. 1 to 1 slash 2 minus 6 21 thousand 24 thousand. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic Reaching Safety Lecture 43. Regular nut and shoulder nut eye bolt installation for inline loading with an unpack through hole. More than one eye bolt diameter, one eye bolt diameter of threads. Of threads, only one nut is required or less. Use two two nuts. Tighten hex nut securely against tighten hex nut securely against load load. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 44. Regular nut and shoulder nut eye bolt installation for inline loading with a tap hole. Engagement depth 1.5 x diameter 1 eye bolt diameter of threads in steel or less. Engagement depth 2.5 x diameter in aluminum 6000 series. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 45. Examples of non-load rated eye bolts that should never be used for rigging. Welded eye bolt open eye bolt bent eye bolt. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic R Jing Safety Lecture 46. Machinery eye bolt do s. Visually inspect eye bolt for any damage or corrosion on threads and body. Always be sure threads on the shank and receiving holes are clean. Ensure eye bolt has proper identification markings. Always countersink receiving hole or use washers to seat the shoulder properly. Always screw eye bolt down completely for proper seating. Always tighten nuts securely against the load. When using blind tap holes, make sure thread engagement is more than 1.5 times the diameter of the thread in steel and 2.5 times in aluminum. Rev May 18, 2012 Basic